master these five tips and become god at playing 3v3 in EASHL. The first tip is positioning. There are three different types of positions that you and your team need to sort out before playing clubs. The four checker, the versatile player, and the last man back. The last man back should be obvious. That is your defenseman. The only thing now is to decide on your four checker and your versatile player amongst your forwards. The four checker is the one that hard four checks the opponent's defenseman or whoever they have breaking up the park. His job is to get in the way of that player and make it hard for him to pass and skate. Stay in front of him and don't let the puck carrier get around you. Now, if you're really good like the four checker I have from my team, the four checker can steal the puck and get an on man rush or breakaway sometimes, so try to master it. Next is your versatile player. This player plays both offense and defense and can transition efficiently throughout. This player either helps forecheck or hangs back and supports the defenseman on cross creases while on D. On offense, this player is in the play, but can also read and get back on D if a predetermined turnover is imminent. This is important to learn as you don't want to leave your defenseman in the dust with two on ones. The defenseman is a last man back and rarely, if ever, can proceed on offense if an on man rush or chance presents itself. Otherwise, just play back and never let any play behind you. The second tip deals with understanding one on one battles. Winning puck battles is crucial to establishing dominance over your opponent. Everyone has a man on defense. Keep your man to the perimeter and skate with them until you see a chance to poke check or go for a hit, but never let your man to the inside of you. When pursuing the loose puck near the boards with your opponent, it's important to learn when to stick lift just before getting the puck to ensure that you win the puck battle and maintain the puck. In some cases where your opponents are faster and get the puck before you, Use the board pin technique when necessary or position yourself and stay inside of them. Another thing is when some players board pin themselves with the puck to avoid a hit and being able to kind of read that and see a chance to board pin them and keep them there as well. It presents a chance for your teammate to go in and retrieve the puck. But that happens rarely. Now, if you get there first when an opponent is pursuing you, you got to make sure that you're pulling the puck away from them immediately and trying to make moves to get around them or just simply dish the puck to a teammate. The third tip is puck possession. TUA or time on attack is really important in winning games because the longer your team has the puck, the longer your opponents don't. Now with puck possession, you have to be able to break in the puck effectively into the zone to avoid turnovers going back the other way. There are multiple ways of breaking in the puck, such as a few passes to generate speed, simply skating it in yourself, or a slap shot dump around for your teammate. While in the zone, a huge skill gap amongst players is the ability to control the puck solo. When done right, this buys time for your teammates to get open for a pass. Make sure you're making smart passes to your teammates to keep the play alive and also open up that golden high percentage chance. Versus a potential weak shot that usually goes nowhere. It can also lead to a on-man rush going back the other way. The fourth tip is to master the read option play. This is honestly probably one of the toughest things that players simply miss when they're playing threes. Two-on-ones happen a lot in threes due to incompetent forwards. But rarely happen to those higher skill teams. So you have to be able to capitalize on the opportunities that are present. The main factor is reading the defenseman. If he pursues you, then you make the pass for the cross crease. If he covers your teammate, then make a move on the goalie or shoot at short side, potentially on a human goalie, if he gets baited over to that side. Don't panic and force the pass if there was someone there because it's hard to successfully get the pass through in NHL 22. This gets paired up with the last tip in puck possession and knowing how to control the puck to open up opportunities for the cross crease is essential. One-timers are still the main way to score in this game in threes, and if done right, you can score almost every time as long as you learn to buy time and read the play correctly. If the option is not there for either the cross crease or the short side shot, being able to read that and realize the chance to cycle down low with the potential give and go works as well. 
It's about being able to make a nice pass down low and a little switch play, basically. A lot of less skilled players don't realize that they're giving up on a lot of plays because they either don't have the ability to control the puck and buy time, or they feel the need to get rid of the puck quickly because of the fear of losing it. They wind up taking less percentage shots due to this, but given the current state of the game so far with the way the goalies are programmed and how they can make great saves at times against high percentage shots and give up weak goals against low percentage shots just gives you the idea of why many players right now are unhappy with the gameplay. I want to hear what you guys think of the way the game has changed since launch when you think of the new update tuner that just released on the 9th. I would love to hear your feedback on that. Are you guys still playing this game or have you moved on? I am unhappy with the way the game has changed because of the way the puck bounces that not only hurts us at times throughout the game, but also goes for us. And I know that it takes no skill to get a bounce your way like that. It has to be due to the way EA has changed stick physics and the way the goalies are programmed. Hopefully EA Sports realizes this and will make a tuner update that we are satisfied with in the future. Hopefully. But if you can master the read option while playing this game, you will improve dramatically playing 3v3. The fifth and final tip is to just get better. <laughs> what I mean is play drop-ins. In order to get better quickly over others is to get in the mix with randoms. You can't just wait until your club comes on to play because you hate playing with randoms. Don't worry about the other players. Focus only on refining yourself. Don't care about the score, what your teammates are doing. Just focus on yourself. Pick something that you want to get better at, whether it be puck control, the read option, playing defense, and only focus on that. You will start to see improvement like you've never seen before because what you do is honestly you isolate yourself from everything else happening around you and nothing else matters. Every time I do this, I always feel a sense of calmness that I never really feel when playing clubs because you're trying to win and you have to do whatever it takes to win. And honestly, if you isolate yourself like this, you will eventually start to see things from a different angle and that makes you